He's like, Mom, I haven't changed. I'm still the same kid, like what's wrong? It's a little dramatic. We are so excited to do a reaction to this parody because we did this four years ago. Like it's been a while and a lot has changed. <laughs> And we just want to tell you why we wrote it at the time and honestly what we would do differently now too. If you hear a sound, I don't know how well you can hear it, but that's Ezra and, and sometimes while he is in his bed falling asleep, he does his little uh, chirp screams. So if you hear that, it's just Ezra. Don't be alarmed. It's, it's our normal. We're totally used to it, but we thought we'd explain it to you just in case. <laughs> you can hear the you, chirp screams. Just in case you can hear his chirp. And it's not just when he's falling asleep. He does it. Okay, he Some, does it a lot. Oh, he does it a lot, yeah. <laughs> At this time when we made this um, musical parody, it, our life was pretty crazy. Um, I mean, it's probably crazier now, but we thought it was really crazy then. <laughs> so make sure and subscribe to follow the journey. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know we were going to load a family of seven into an RV and go visit all the national parks. Um, so it wasn't that crazy, but it was crazy because we you know, were dealing with autism and... Uh, Sixty-five thousand dollars of credit card debt, and at that time, at that yeah. time, so a lot of a lot of things on our plate for sure. And Holly was working full time as well with uh, just trying to get grants and um, therapy support for for Ezra with with his autism, and and she was doing a great job. She actually uh, got us over a hundred thousand dollars in uh, grants and and different things. So. I spent many, many hours on the computer just looking for grants and applying for grants, um, local ones, federal ones, state ones. It was, it was a full-time job. It was, it was crazy. Um, she but, learned a ton, though. Yeah. And uh, so if you're interested in learning how she did that, we'll put a link in the description below for ronrealautismmom.com. You can check that out, and, and she's got some resources there for any of you who are struggling and uh, stuff as we were with uh, paying for the therapy and all the different things that come with, with autism, a diagnosis. So Yeah, I've got seven ethical ways to get someone else to pay for your child's medical bills. Before we start this video, I do want to explain this was at a time when um, we found out that Ezra was autistic and this was new to us. Like autism was very new to us. We had no idea what to expect and... Well, you were, you had known a long time, but I mean, I was complete denial for a long time. You were time. in denial for like a year. Yeah. And so we shouldn't, you know, get mad at ourselves or feel guilty about it because it's a very typical emotion to go through, like go through denial and then you move on and you go through kind of stages as a caregiver um, once you find out about the diagnosis and I kind of wanted to... Um, show an example of those stages in this video. So, like, the, when I watch this video now, I'm like, it's so sad, why am I so sad? Um, but that was the feeling that I had at the time, and so that was the raw emotion that I wanted to share. And I feel like if we don't share those raw emotions, then it's like, if we just say, oh, it's happy and wonderful and flowers and butterflies all the time, then anyone else is gonna be like, I really can't relate to her. <laughs> and so we want to connect. We want to show the vulnerable side of, you know, being caregivers of five kids and two who are autistic. So the first half of this video is kind of sad. <laughs> and I'm sorry that it is. But as you watch the video, it progresses. And we'll, we'll kind of stop the video and explain little things too. So, all right, let it roll. There's a little logo. Yeah. We worked so hard on that logo. My hair was so long. <laughs> so blonde. It's so beautiful. That was our dentist <laughs> that agreed to act like a doctor who didn't care. <laughs> He's awesome. And we were really there in that location. Yeah, we shot this whole thing in like one... It's just uh, a couple hours. One weekend. So, yeah, we just, like, decided we were going to do all it. all the kids in the car. We all... They're all just, like, whining, complaining in the car <laughs> the whole time. But that is not a green screen. We're not that good. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's actually the location. But I was like, whatever. We're filming anyway. It's a little dramatic.
Okay, stop here. So this, I wanted to kind of replay something that actually happened when I was in the car and we hadn't got the diagnosis yet. So we were at the speech pathologist place and, and she thought that I had left, but I just like turned the corner so I could hear the conversation that she had with the secretary. And she's like, oh yeah, we definitely need to get Ezra um, to go see Dr. So-and-so and for a, diag a diagnosis for autism. And this, the secretary was like, hold on, we don't do that. He's way too young. And then the speech pathologist, who just did an hour session with Ezra, was like, oh, he's an easy diagnosis. He's an easy diagnosis. And she didn't know that I had heard that. And all of a sudden, it was just like real. Everything was real. I'm like, oh, this is a for sure thing. <laughs> like, um, he's not only autistic, he is an easy diagnosis. And I was like, well, what does that even mean? And I remember just taking him to the car and putting him in his seatbelt and then just losing my cool and I just bawled. I wanted to show that in the video because I think that's that's a typical thing for a caregiver to feel at first. I was like super sad right at first, <laughs> crying like crazy. But I'm glad that I let myself feel so that I could move on and really think about how I can support my child. Um, but yeah, so that's the little thing that I was trying to portray right here. The ugly cry. The ugly cry. It was ugly cry. <laughs> He's like totally happy. He's like, Mom, I haven't changed. I'm still the same kid. Like, what's wrong? And Adam's filming this whole time. He kind of didn't want to dance with me. <laughs> He's like, let me go. I want to play in the water. This is the dentist office again. He was coughing, but it was before COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it was okay. <laughs> it was okay back it was then. O it was okay to cough in public back then. No one judged you. <laughs> but he was, in that moment, he took the bucket and he just wanted to throw it. He he still does that. Yeah, he'll throw everything. Just everything he holds. He'll hold it for a while, and then like when and you're then, not looking, he'll, he'll just chuck, chuck it. it. Like, yeah. Gotta watch. <sighs> yeah. Oh, this is my friend. Isn't she a good little actress? Okay, stop. So that's like the line that I'm like, oh, I don't want people to like feel like I feel that way now. Because at that time, when you first find out as a caregiver, especially if you don't know much about autism, you don't know other people who are autistic, then you're like, I had plans and expectations for my child that now I need to let go of. And I think it's healthy for parents to go through that stage of like, um, I need to let go of those expectations and set new expectations <laughs> because I have a child that needs different support, right? I have a child that, I mean, the sky's the limit. I don't know the potential of this child, but I also don't want to like put on crazy expectations that are realistic or only hurt the child. And so that's what I'm meaning by this line is that I don't want to like offend every autistic person out there like, oh, my hopes are broken. But like at that time, that's how I felt and I was able to move on. So hopefully I explained that well. <laughs> move from, yeah, more like this is about me and this is how I feel to how do we just help Ezra get as much autonomy as he possibly can. Yeah, and help them gain that independence. Yeah. And have that be the goal. And it's not... He's not going to be hitting the milestones like the other kids on <laughs> yeah. all the different things. And and that's just what you have to be okay with. And just uh, his, uh, you know, goals and expectations are, we're just uh, changing them all the time to get a little bit, a little bit further and a little bit further trying to potty train right now. And that's, uh, that's a chore. That's a, that's been a big, a big, thing. big job. <laughs> For several months now, mm -hmm. but he's learning and, and the he progress is progressing. Is very slow, it's so slow, very slow, but but it is progress. So, you know, when I was talking to uh, one of um, actually one of the people who've been commenting, uh, we chatted with him, and I mean, the, he didn't talk. He's 
he didn't talk till he was like 11 or 12 and I think same on potty training and stuff and and now he's in college and doing very well so I mean um you know anything can happen so it's just if you think about all the things that we normally learn so quickly in these milestones um, at such a young age at such a young age I mean if it takes another 10 years hey that's, who cares yeah, like that's, then that's great you know and and uh and so it'll just be interesting to see and it's a it's a exciting journey to to you know just put one milestone and one goal in front of the next and just you know see where we wind up and yeah and celebrate every single milestone yeah. like no matter when it happens yeah so but at least I- See, now I'm changing. Now I'm like determined. And those are all our friends. Again, it's like all about me. So if I were to rewrite this song, I think I wouldn't make it all about me <laughs> the whole entire time. And then talk more about like my child, how what a gift he is to me, you know, things like that. So maybe I should do another parody with another song. But um Yeah, tell us in the comments <laughs> if she needs to do a, a version two. Yeah, put in the comments if you want like a version of like what I would write now, like how you know, how he's a blessing in our life, how he is a gift to our family, you know. This was fun, filming. Look how small Mark is and <laughs> Marie. He loved being in there because it was cold. He likes being cold. Like he liked the caves. Yeah, when I were going down to the national parks, he loved being he in the loved caves. The caves. Well, and we would bug a lot of people because he was so loud. Yeah, because he'd do his noises. And he'd do his chirping and he'd just scream because he's so, so happy. happy in there. Yeah, we've had some adventures in those caves, <laughs> including poopy diapers and breastfeeding and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, so yeah, we did I can that. Link in those. Case link those movies in the hair too because the baby's crying and they're hungry anyway. but yeah that was but an that's adventure. why like Ezra loved like when you would open the door to in when you're in the grocery store and you'd open the door to the like freezer stuff like he loves that he loves the cold yeah slow motion oh love it he's so little See, I would say everything he is is a gift from God, not I am. <laughs> I would make it more about him. And right here, like, as a, as a caregiver, there are so many times when you're in public and people don't understand and you feel like they're just trying to tear you down. Like, <laughs> there have been people who have been like, no, he's not autistic, he's not autistic. And, like, just judge my parenting and just n not understand the situation. Yes, Ezra, I don't know if you can hear him. He's, he's, he's going, agreeing. He's going, yay! <laughs> um, but right here it says, you know, if you have an autistic child, you're in good company. So we want to, we want to bring in the positive as well because he is such a gift to our family. And we've learned a lot. I mean, we're, we're such different people now. And I, our older kids are too because we, have him, because we have him in our family. And we're still learning. Yeah, and that's one reason why we've done, you know, what we've done and shared what we've shared and trying to build that community, right? Because there's a lot of autistic people out there and they're amazing. I Just the ones that we've met so far in our journey and... Yeah. Um, you know, even just commenting, just awesome people who really care. Um, and so having that community and that, um, and hearing each one of their stories, like yeah. the struggles that they've had, 
the hard things they've had to deal with and then like the mountains they've climbed and the the things that they've accomplished. Yeah. It's really amazing and very inspiring. So, so yeah, so we're here for you guys. Um, you know, we answer all of our comments. <laughs> we're really good at that. <laughs> have, you don't become and you don't experience without the struggle and and so it's something that, you know, we're grateful for and, and grateful for everyone in our community and all, all you guys who've been so gracious and even giving us great ideas and advice about how to, about how, how, how to, how we can, how be, better we can be better. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've got some really good advice that we've taken like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Just and put your life on YouTube and people <laughs> will critique it, right? People so. will, will help you become a better person. That's right. And we'll tell you what they think you should do. Um, but I think, I think too, as far as the community goes, we don't want anyone to feel alone. Like whether you are a caregiver or a parent, um, you know, someone who's autistic or you are autistic or you're married to someone autistic. Um, we don't want anyone to feel like they're alone with whatever struggles they are having. And so when we put stuff out there, we want to be real. We want to be raw. We want to be vulnerable. We also want to be respectful and we want to be truthful um, and hopefully helpful <laughs> as well. Um, so, yeah, you're a good company. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm like pushing the mountain away from me. That was cute. Does he kind of smile there? Oh no. He smiles at the end. It's cute. Please consider subscribing. Please consider subscribing. <laughs> He's just smiling. So cute. Are you pulling my hair? <laughs> check out the music video right here if you haven't seen it yet. And check out the Autism Playlist where we give a ton of awesome content about autism as well as our adventures as we travel to all the national parks with five kids in an RV. Yep, two who are autistic.